everyone. Happy Thursday. Happy live stream Thursday. I am Olivia. I am so excited to be here with you all today. We have an amazing live stream guest today, um, and I know you all are really excited to have him on. But first, let's say hello to the chat. I see we already have a lot of good mornings. I'm sure for some people it's good afternoon, good evening. It's morning where I am, so good morning, Kobe. Hello, Olaf. Let me know where y'all are watching from. I'm always so excited to kind of see the scope that we have and to kind of see where everyone's coming from. Mark, happy day to all. Yes, yes, it's going to be a great day. The coding train. Hello. <laughs> uh, this is kind of meta. We have our presenter in the chat too, and then we'll have him on as well. So this is going to be fun. Um, Sherry, hello. Uh, Luther, you're hosting the legend himself. We, oh my gosh, yes. I'm so excited. This is my first time ever getting a chance to work with Dan. So it's going to be really, really fun for me. I feel very privileged to be here today and to kind of be a part of this energy and to learn a lot because I think it's going to be a really fun live stream for everyone. Um, good midnight from Japan. I love that. <laughs> Thanks for being here so late for staying up late with us. Um, from South Africa, I see we have a couple people there. Um, East Africa, hello. From Singapore, from Sweden, ooh, from Poland. <laughs> you guys are typing so fast, I can't put it up quick enough. Um, from San Francisco, hello. I know it's early for you, what, 8 a.m. for you. So thanks for having your morning coffee with us. Um, and eager to learn. I think that that is a great note to kind of end us on because I think we're all really, really excited to um, have Dan on and learn from him with one of his coding challenges. Um, but before we dive into that, we're going to just start with something fun we usually do on these live streams um, and do a throwback TikTok Thursday. Now that you can use VS Code for your Spring development. So you go on VS Code extensions, you select the Spring Boot extension package that comes with the Spring Boot tooling as well as the Spring dashboard and the Spring initializer. Did you ever wonder how you can just access all your beans as well as all the web API endpoints? Check it out. You can just click on it and here you are right in your code so you can easily debug and check and dive into your specific code snippets. How easy and wonderful and accessible is that? I love those. They're always so fun. Um, definitely make sure to check us out on TikTok and YouTube so you can see more of those. Um, but if you're a Java developer, I'm sure you like that. Let me know in the chat if we have any Java developers with us here today. Um, lots more hellos and um, from the UK, from Vietnam, from India. Okay, this is awesome. We have so much energy already going on. So I think with that, let's go ahead and bring on our guest, Dan. Hello, here Hello. I am. Oh my gosh. We are, I mean, you've seen the chat, right? It's already blowing up. People are so excited <laughs> saying the legend himself. <laughs> Everyone's so happy to have you here. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. I am coming to you live from Brooklyn, New York here. I'm actually sitting in uh, at New York University in downtown Brooklyn. Uh, it's the end of the semester. So in addition to the coding train, my day job is teaching classes here. So you, what, one of the things I'm excited about is usually I'm live streaming from a garage little studio that I oh, yes. built at home, but I'm doing this. You know, there'd be, you might see some people in the background, but it's pretty empty today because the semester is now over. So that's so fun. So I love I'm the super thrilled to be here. Yeah, this is yeah. great. And I'm sure you're so happy to kind of have a little, a little bit of downtime. I know you're yeah. still very busy, but with the semester ending, I'm sure you probably had a little end of semester celebrations. As oh, well. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, I mean, people are so excited to have you here. So do you want to give a little bit more background on yourself and what you're going to be talking about today? Sure. Yeah. So um, hi, everybody. Um, it's great. First of all, it's really amazing to see all of the people from all around the world in the chat. That's one of my favorite things about live streaming on YouTube. I've been, uh, I haven't been streaming as regularly recently. So this is, this being here today, thank you for the invitation because it's giving me a boost of energy and motivation oh to gosh, try to get, for being get here. <laughs> get back into the rhythm of doing it this summer. But so just to introduce myself, I've been working 
on open source creative coding tools for a little over 20 years now. Um, and about 10 years ago, I started making um, videos. I've been teaching. I think the first class that I ever taught, a learn to programming class, was in 2004. And then, you know, around, I think like, you know, 2012 or so, I started making videos to accompany my classes. I would just kind of teach the class, then I'd go back into my office afterwards and record a screencast and share it with the students. And that kind of doing that for a few years, starting to put them online, I realized, oh, there's a whole world of people <laughs> out there who are interested in learning to code um, and I can reach new audiences. So that's what I've been doing now for the last, you know, close to 10 years, which is um, publishing online video tutorials. And the space that I inhabit, um, I would say it's a, you know, a lot of the, a lot of what I do online is really geared towards beginners. So I don't know, what, you know, I'm sure there's a wide range of skills and experience that are watching today. But if you out there right now are a total beginner, I'm going to try to demonstrate some stuff that's fairly beginner friendly today. But even if it's above what you're aware of or what you're used to, um, what I do have on my channel is a lot of like step by step you've never coded before <laughs> tutorial. So that's really what I'd love to do the most. Uh, sometimes I'll wander into some slightly more advanced territories, but <laughs> Pretty much the stuff that I do is in the beginner realm, and particularly, um, um, I use um, I work with a tool called P5JS and also something called Processing, which are um, you know loosely referred to as creative coding toolkits. And that really means a lot of the examples that I do, the output is visual. It could be applied in visual arts or generative art, but really it's about it's about expressing yourself through code. So that's really what I try to bring to my tutorials. It's less about um, hey, I'm going to show you how to get this exact result, but I'm going to show you how to play and explore with code. So, so that's really what I do, and I'm excited to try to bring, synthesize a lot of those things in a quick sort of round robin of tutorials today. Yeah, I love this. I feel like you really embody like the spirit that we're always hoping to embody too, just with the VS Code channel, right? Like eager to learn. Like we get a lot yeah. of beginners in the live stream, so I'm sure this is going to be really exciting. Um, we have someone in the chat who said, um, I used to call you Mr. P5. <laughs> so, <laughs> lots of people familiar with you already in the chat. Yeah. For, sure first name, first name P5 is fine also. Yeah. You know, no, no need for the formality of Mr. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Well, I know people are really eager to kind of get started. So let's go ahead and get your screen up and dive into Great. things. Great. Yeah, so what I'm starting with here, so I just have a few, I'll, I'll start sort of living in the web browser for a moment to show you a little bit more about the different tools that I use um, and where you can find some of the additional video tutorials and things if you know you just like got super excited from whatever I'm gonna show today and want more. Um, and then I'm gonna dive into VS Code and look at how I work with this library called P5.js. So this is the P5.js website. Oh, I should mention just quickly, let me back up for a second. If you're interested in learning more about the program at NYU where I'm sitting right now, you can uh, go here to the NYU Tisch website, ITP IMA. There's both a graduate and undergraduate program. So, you know, uh, feel free to reach out to me on social media or whatever if you, if you have questions about it, but P5. Um, P5 is an open source JavaScript library for creative coding, a focus on making coding accessible and inclusive for artists, designers, educators, beginners, and anyone else. Um, and it comes, it's maintained by an organization called the Processing Foundation. Um, and the Processing Foundation is an organization that I helped to co-found in 2012. And it grew out of the processing project. And so the processing project is actually, speaking of Java, if you are a Java programmer out there, I actually really originally learned to code with processing, which is built on top of the programming language JavaScript. So processing was created by Ben Fry and Casey Reese when they were students um, at the MIT Media Lab under John Maida um, back in the early 2000 and 2001. So it's had oh, an over 20 year history. Um, wow. These days I am using P5JS. I actually use processing quite a bit whenever I'm trying to figure something out for myself. But when I'm teaching, I'm often using P5JS because of the ability to just run the things that I'm making online. So, um, and, and that shareability, that ease of like sending a, stu a student can turn in their homework with a URL and I can share them a code example with the URL, that to me is incredibly powerful. Um, and, uh, you know, interestingly enough, I don't want to go on too many tangents, but that's why processing picked Java originally in 2001. I don't know if anybody remembers this, <laughs> but the <laughs> applets were the way to share your interactive animations and graphics on the web, you know, 20 plus years ago. 
For sure. That's awesome. No, I love these tangents. I think it's really cool to hear all the background. I think like probably everyone who's watching would love to just like be in your brain too. <laughs> so to kind of just like hear your thoughts. Um, and I love kind of that, that emphasis on kind of, right. It's meeting people where they are, right. Like kind of not getting people yeah. out of the flow. You can easily just send that URL and kind of make it as accessible as possible. Like you were saying. Yeah. So I would really encourage anyone who's interested to poke around the processing and P5 websites. There's a nice here on P5, you can see there's a nice getting started page. And this is essentially what I'm going to go through in VS Studio code, in VS code. There's a, um, the P5 has its own online web editor, which you can also use. Um, and so you'll see that often referenced on the um, P5 website. Um, and um, yeah, so we'll come back. There's a reference. I'll probably look up some things here. There's lots more, I, I you know, it, there's the community and the show, the showcase is really wonderful. So I really encourage you to check all this stuff out, but I'm going to hold off. I'll come back to some of these URLs as they come up. Um, and then, um, yeah. And so what I'm going to do in P5, so I have um, my YouTube channel is called The Coding Train. Actually, this is a new website. I mean, I, I call it new, but it's 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 new, new to me, but it's been around now for, for, for I don't know when it launched, but it's many months. Um, but so this is the website where you can find um, for example, this uh, beginner set of tutorials to code programming with P5.js. But I have a series, and if I go here, called uh, Challenges. And the challenges are essentially project videos. So I'll take things that are often concepts from the sort of world of math and physics, like the prime spiral is this uh, spiral that was you know, invented by a Polish mathematician named Stanislav Ulam, and I'll create a visualization of that spiral and, or looking at it, unpacking a Bezier curve. You know, I'm, I'm sure like lots of people are like, wait, wait, what? Bezier curve? I don't even know what that is. But that's <laughs> my sort cool. of, that's what my goal with a lot of these videos is to pick different algorithms and look at how to write them in code. And you'll often see the result in processing or P5. So I'm going to look here um, and I'm going to go, the very first one that I did, I'll search for it here was the star field. Um, and it's my old thumbnail style. Um, so you can see this is me. I've got quite a bit less gray hair in this video <laughs> from about seven years ago. Um, so And so on the given video pages, um, you can click over. And like if I click here on this P, the processing link, it'll take me to um, a GitHub page that has the actual processing code. And you might uh, recognize um, uh, what looks like Java syntax here. Um, there's time codes, uh, there's different references, uh, description, but what I really wanted to highlight actually is I have this thing called the passenger showcase. And the reason why I'm showing this to you is because if you're watching today <laughs> and you watch me make the star field in P5 and you wanna make your own, maybe you just wanna add color, you wanna change the shapes from circles to triangles, something really simple and small is fine. You can submit your project, which will then be here. And we could click on just like a random one, like let's look at, um, um, I, I apologize if I mispronounce the name, Mikalina Jablonska. I have not checked this in advance, but it's still there. You can see this is their version of the star field. And so what you can do is um, if you, I'm, I think there's a link here, submit to the showcase. If you find this button, submit to the showcase. There's a form here, hopefully somewhat self-explanatory. You got to find the right video, which in this case would be the star field um, and fill out the form. So I don't, um, we could, I could come back to that later if there's more time, but I wanted to just mention that because one of the thing that gets me the most excited and keeps me motivated to do what I do is not just to make the tutorials, but to see the creativity of, of, of the rest of the world, the people who are watching. Um, and so I really would love for, for people to share that afterwards if they're interested. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. Um, and for those of you who are watching, we are putting these links in the chat and they will be available in the description. So if you're like, oh my gosh, how do I find this again? Don't worry. Um, you will have access to all of this um, and get a chance to try this yeah. out. Um, and also I just want to do, right. I mean, if y'all aren't already familiar with Dan, you can already see from this live stream, he has such great energy. Definitely check out all of his videos and all of his challenges. You'll see it today in the live stream, but just <laughs> all of his videos are so fun. Like when I was watching them, I was like, oh my gosh, like I want to hang out with this person. Like this is making me so <laughs> excited. <laughs> like, And there's kind of a couple of comments kind of um, related to that. Someone said, Christian said, Dan helped reignite my childhood love of coding, right? It kind of brings that joy to it. So big plug for his channel and all of his work. He's just so much fun. <laughs> and I actually got to meet, that's uh, Christian Wiekmann who just made that comment, who I got to meet uh, in Copenhagen last year. So oh, one fun. of the things that Pro the Processing Foundation does is there are these events called Processing Community Day. And there was one in Copenhagen last summer that I got to travel to. So that was really fantastic. Oh, I love uh, so that. So be on the lookout wherever you are. 
some, there might be a processing community day around you and you could go. So, or you can organize one actually, just go to the foundation website, you'll find information. One, just one other quick thing I'll mention here on the website. If you look, there is a, also a coding train discord, which we're actually going to put some more energy into hopefully this summer, but that's a great place. Uh, if you're, if you're trying to figure out how to add your project to the showcase later, or, you know, can't figure you're getting a weird error with the code that I demonstrated, that's kind of the go-to for getting help with your stuff. Okay. So feel free to sign up for the discord as well. All right. Are we ready to dive in? I think we do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm going to switch over to uh, VS Code here. And so the first thing I'll mention is just so to one of the lovely things about working with P5, it's very beginner friendly. The goal of P5, you know, from my point of view, is to let you instantly just write a single line of code and see something happen on the screen. So, but, um, you know, because we're building a web page, in addition to the JavaScript code that we're going to write, which I have broken out into a separate file, you're going to need uh, an HTML file. And the only thing you need is to reference the P5 library itself. And you can see that I'm doing that through a URL. So those of you who have more experience with J JavaScript development and build systems, there's all sorts of other ways you can use the P5 library. But this is the simplest way just to get this template, um, which I, you know I'll publish this stuff after we're done today, um, make sure it's like available for people easy to find, and just reference that library. Then, of course, you can write your JavaScript code directly into the HTML file. But what I typically do is reference a separate file, which is just empty right now. I'm calling it sketch.js. The sort of philosophy of P5 and processing is to be sketching with code, right? So, um, so I'm going to move over to that now. And I'm going to just write a little code. So one of the things about P5 is uh, it knows, it, it looks in your code for two basic functions set up and draw. So the idea of any animation is there's some things you do at the beginning, like I've got to initialize some settings for the project I'm making. And then an animation has this loop that happens forever and ever. So if I want to draw a circle and then I want to draw it again, moving it and moving it and moving it, that's called the draw loop. And so, and what I can do just to make sure we're going to see something on the screen is I can write a function called create canvas and I'm going to give it two arguments, uh, 400, 400 and then in draw i'm going to say background uh, 255 actually let's give it a color so um, i'm writing another function now called background which will fill the background of the canvas with a color and the arguments it expects is a red green and blue value let's give it a little blue also so we get a nice like pink or purple. So I don't see anything happening. I'm just writing the code, but here's what's exciting. So in Visual Studio Code, um, there are these different kinds of extensions that you can install. <laughs> Olivia, you probably know more about this than I do. So feel free to correct me. And I can open up this, um, what, what is this called here? This uh, The command uh, palette. The command palette. I can open up the <laughs> command palette because I've installed an extension called Live Preview. And I'm going to start the server. And actually, okay, I wonder if it's already going here. Now I'm now I'm now I'm lost. What just happened? Maybe I hit the wrong one. I had this up earlier. All right, I might need some help. Okay. Is, Let's see. Oh wait, no, here it's running. It's, yeah. I see that it's running, but I just lost my um I lost my let's stop the server. Maybe and that's then what restart, I need get to do. the preview. Let's restart it. Ah, start server. There we go. Okay, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> and what what's lovely here, you can also see is I've got this nice little terminal window down here. Um, I'm going to close that right now because I don't, now that everything's working, I don't need to look at it. But so it's running a local web server, which is hosting this web page that I've created. And you can see, like, let's add a little bit of green. And now the color's changed. I could get rid of all of the red. And I love how this is sort of live updating, which is actually, it's nothing that I've gotten involved in myself, but a lot of the students here who you might see wandering in the background, a lot of them do live coding performances. So that's something that I've been thinking, oh, I need to, I need to learn more about that. Anyway. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, okay, so you see that I've called this function called create canvas and I've called this function called background. So this would be a good moment. I'm going to not explain, you know, we'll be here for, all day if I try to explain every little detail of everything that I'm doing. But where this stuff comes from, if I go back to the P5 website, is if I were to look here and search for, oh, the background function, there is a reference page. It explains what background does. It shows you an example. It gives you a couple different examples. Um, one thing I'll note is that a big, uh, big core um, 
principle of P5 is to really focus on accessibility. And so I'm just noting, you might be wondering, what is this describe function? So P5 actually has a describe function, which for people who use the web with a screen reader, who aren't maybe looking at the canvas or don't can't see the canvas, can hear visual descriptions of your code. So that's often, you often see that. That is so important. Levels. I'm so glad that y'all kind of have that, you know, built in there and, yeah. and really are, are honing in on that. Yeah. So and you can see here, these are all the different ways you can call background. And as we go, I'm going to use lots of functions. Like, for example, I'm going to really be focusing on using the circle function. I'm going to use something called a P5 vector. Um, and so all of the reference, the explanation for all of these things are all here on the P5 website. OK, now let's go back to the code. And I'm going to leave the background as black just to kind of keep a nice spacey look to it. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is just, let's just draw a circle. So this is a canvas. It's 400 by 400 pixels. If I were to give it an X, Y, and then this is actually the diameter, we now see we have this circle in the center of the canvas. Um, and, you know, whoops, um, I can uh, set its fill to 255. Um, and I realized one of the things I, I just have to like cop to this right now. So I created a separate new account because I wanted to start from a blank slate <laughs> in VS Code. And I realized like, oh, all of my settings for like printifying things and yeah. formatting code, they're all kind of like lost now. So I might be stumbling a little bit. But and by the way, I'm so terrible at that. So one of the things I would love, if you are a person who loves to figure out the best way to configure Visual Studio Code to uh, to um, work to like, you know, format your code to auto complete with the P5 library. Feel free to get in touch with me and give me your tips because <laughs> I'm terrible at that. Okay. Yeah. But I'm just going to do a quick plug for profiles. You could have a whole entire profile that's just for your P5 development uh, and then you right. switch to that. And then, and then to that. when you yeah. don't want that, you can just switch Yeah, back and forth. <laughs> Shameless plug. I, I should have asked you that because I practiced all this and I practiced yeah. it in my other log into the computer. <laughs> I should have asked you that a couple of days no, ago. No, I love it though. We're seeing like, we'll right, this fine. is this is so relatable, right? So yeah. many people are going to just be starting and not know how to, you know, configure. Right. So like, this is, this is yeah. the real deal. <laughs> yeah, great. So, okay. So what I want to do is I want to move this dot. And so the way that I'm going to do that is, you know, obviously I need a variable that's going to change over time. And I'm going to start with just, I'm, I'm going to call a variable star. And then I'm going to say star equals create vector. So I'm going to use this uh, function in P5 called create vector that is a, will make an object that stores an X, Y, and a Z. And even though I'm not going to use a 3D renderer, I'm going to kind of like create, this is a 2D renderer. P5 does have 3D capabilities, but I'm going to create sort of 3D perspective just out of a 2D renderer, which I think is a nice sort of like really friendly way to begin with sort of thinking about 3D. So the circle is now at 200, 200. So what I want to do is create a vector where the position is at 200, 200, and then I'm going to give it Z um, uh, zero. Like it's going to be just flat in the middle there. I'm going to say star dot X, star dot Y. So this is the same thing, but I just put it in a variable. Now what I want to do is I'm going to say, let's just say like, so I need to uh, have a, I'm going to use D for diameter. So right now the diameter is 16. But what I want to do is I want to create this illusion of 3D. So the way I can do that is if my Z value, which is keeping track of this like pretend number as if the circle is actually leaving the screen and coming towards me, the bigger it gets, the closer it gets to me. So I can sort of say, let me map. There's a function in P5 called map, which will take any given value that has some range to it. Like I know like, oh, my star's Z value, maybe it has a range between zero and 400. And I want its diameter when it's at zero to be just one. And then maybe as it gets closer and closer to me, I want it to get bigger. So I'll make it 10. Okay. And if I were to now write some code to just have the Z value increase, remember draw is looping and maybe I need to have it increase a little bit faster. We can see it's growing. It, it looks like you can almost think of it as like coming towards me. Okay. So it's all about kind of that illusion. So you kind of like, right. you're still thinking in a 2D way, but like thinking yeah. about okay, if something was getting closer, it gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. So you're just kind of tapping into that yeah. illusion. Yeah. Okay. Got exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to not only have it um, 
get bigger, but I want it to feel like I want this like hyperspace, like, you know, I'm on, I'm on Star Trek and I hit the like turbo thruster boost and I'm getting all the terminology wrong. <laughs> Sorry, Star Trek fans. I'm one of you too, but I just, I can, I'm live streaming so I can't come up with this stuff <laughs> off the top of my head. But, um, you know, I, I want to, um, so I want to see that I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump into hyperspace. I want to see those like streaks of lines kind of like flying by, by me and off to the side. So let me first put the star a little bit to the right. Um, and what the way I can create this illusion is I can actually say, let me, um, instead of drawing the circle at X and Y, let me make up an X value, which is going to be the star's X value divided by its Z value. In other words, I, the, the closer it's getting to me, I might, I, we might discover that I've done this backwards. This happens to me all the time. So we'll, we'll find out. Don't worry, I have a working version of this, so we can always prefer to that if necessary. Um, but the, basically, like as it gets bigger, I want it to be um, moving out and to the right. So, okay. uh, um, so, and then I'll do the same thing with the Y value. And then what I'm gonna do is instead of drawing the circle at the star's actual value, I'll use these variables. So let's see what we get here. Now, okay, so I did something unfortunate here, which is that I think it would make more sense. So one of the things about P5 is the graphics engine has the uh, top left corner as zero, zero. So that's the zero, zero spot. And what I really want is for zero, zero to be in the center. It's gonna make okay. my life much easier. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm gonna say a translate. So translate is a function that allows me to change the origin point of the, and I've got, like, I'm like doing all my auto formatting manually right now. <laughs> Let me put the spaces there. It moves the origin point. So now you can see there it is back at the center. Okay. Right. Because basically, like, let me put the star at zero, zero. It's at the center. Um, and let's uh, and the, the Z being I should never allow the one thing is an issue is Z can't technically be zero. So mm -hmm. I should really start the Z at like 10 just okay. to be more. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is let's put the star. Um, I'm also just for the sake of argument here, I'm going to just. Just to make things a little simpler for a second, I'm going to keep the diameter fixed at 16. Let's see what happens now if I move the star off to the right. And let's move it more to the right. And you can see what's happening. It, it's it's oh. moving really fast. Yeah. Um, so let me slow it down. So you can sort of see that, that streak each time I refresh it. Oops. Okay, so let's think about this. Let's see if we've got this right. I'm, like, I'm sure the chat's gonna help me at some point. Okay, so the, I, I'm trying to do, the point of this, I'm trying to just show you how to work with one of these and then we're gonna make an array and lots of them and we'll get much more exciting. So don't okay. worry if you're like, wait, why is there just a circle up there? <laughs> but you gotta start small, gotta start incrementally. Exactly. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do now is let's let it have a random value. So, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the width and height of the canvas. Um, so these are built-in variables in P5. Whatever I created the canvas at 400, 400, those will be baked into width. So okay. let's give it a random um, and a random negative height, comma height, and then I'm also going to give the z value a random uh, value between zero uh, between like 10 and width. Okay. So every time we refresh this. To get a new random value. Okay, let's see what's going on. So let's not let's not move the Z for a second. I think I think actually what I'd like to do now, because I'm having trouble visualizing this. Like so, um, I think it would actually make sense to make a lot of them. So I think that'll okay. be more fun. So let's let's actually change this to stars and make it an array. And then I'm gonna just let's make like 50 of them. So here I'm just, uh, and I'm going to say stars index I, and then instead of drawing just one circle, I can now put a loop here that's going to say for each star, I'm going to use, use this like for of loop, which is kind of like a uh, JavaScript. Um, some of you might be more familiar with like for each, but basically this now allows me to loop through everything. And I think I've got an error. So now 
Here's the thing. So what do I do if I get an error? Because I'm not seeing anything here. Now, people in the chat might actually know it already, but I believe if I go here, where's the, um, and I look, oh, open dev tools pane. There we go. Okay, so cool. this should yeah. show me um, any errors. Like, so for example, if I were to say uh, console log, hello, you should see hello here. Oh boy, what's going on now? This is always the fun part of demos. There is yeah. one um, uh, request in the chat. If you can um, hide the file, ah, yes, 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 so yes, people yes. can see more. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and actually, what I would like to do here is this, even though this is not the friendliest of format, that'll sort of help us um, kind of see this function call a little better. Mm -hmm. uh, just format that. OK. All right, so let's let's look at this. So I'm a little confused why I'm We've not got getting some um, some suggestions. Um, Kobe says line five. Your end condition says fifty instead of i equals. 50. Oh, oh, I let that. Thank you. There we go. I might have broken the server. Yes, because... and then someone else said restart the server. <laughs> <laughs> this is by the way. This is I. It's funny. Like I, I, you're such a professional operation. I feel like on my live streams, this is the whole point of the demos. No, I love this. Totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah, this is the best. yeah, okay, restart the server. So I'm going to, uh, let's see. So I think if I go to here and I do stop server and then go to here and do start server, we should be back. There we go. There we go. Look at We've all the stars. Look, <laughs> look, there we go. There we go. Whew. Okay. And now I see the hello printing out. Okay. So we can see the console is active. Thank you, chat. Um, and uh, I'm also going to um, add a, a command called no stroke because I don't want a black outline. Um, and oh, did I? That was weird. That is weird. I, think I typed something in here by accident. I think you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen this happen before. All right, let's 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 restart the server again. There we go. Okay, perfect. So let's see what happens now if we move the Z. I think something about having this open is yeah. Uh, maybe close it for now. It seems yeah. like it's trying to like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is good. Someone said, I love seeing other professionals struggle the same way I do. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, I'm I feel exactly the same because this is so relatable. Like all the time, <laughs> like, you can do something like 10,000 times. And then like, as I soon know. as someone's in front of you, you're like, oh my gosh, like what is yeah. happening? Like, wait, this worked when I tried it. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> the, I was going to say the only, the only quibble I would have with that comment is I, I don't know that I would consider myself a professional, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we all struggle. So, okay, so I want to see um, everything start. Um, and actually, let me just put them all, I'm gonna start them all at 10. Okay, so, okay. So here are all the stars. They're all at a random location. And I can, I actually wanna spread them out more. I think we'll make things uh, better. So I'm gonna just multiply, that should probably be a variable, but let me multiply them by two. And then now here's where I really want to like figure out and start to see something happen like I think it's supposed to. So what am I missing here in seeing these stars move? Oh, look at this. I know what it is. <laughs> so this, I forgot to put this in the loop. I'm yeah. so glad. There's probably an error here. So I need to change the Z for every single one. Oh yeah, there we go. You see it flashing. There we go, yeah. Okay, so what I need to do here, what then everything's like going, like coming, like getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So what would be, there's a couple of things I could do here. One is I could continuously add new stars, which actually could be kind of like a nice thing to do. But I think what might actually be simpler is I could also just say if star.z is less than one, let's just set star.z back equal to uh, 10, just for it. Um, and so what that should do, oh, I guess less than one is like maybe, oh, whoa, no, 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 no. They're getting, it's getting bigger. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so if, if they get too close to me, right, then set them back. Uh, so let's, let's do something smaller. Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is what I wanted to see. Now this still isn't exactly right. Like what's going on here. So one thing that would be really helpful is they should all start at a random spot. Uh, and let's just pick a, something arbitrary like 400. Oops. So now we're starting to see, and then let okay. me spread them out. Let's create a variable. And by the way, I'm doing this totally different than I did the last time because I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to create a variable called factor. 
So I'm going to use that to like really spread them out more. So now you can see, because I want them to sort of feel like they're starting from far off. They are, aren't they, go, are they going the wrong way? I'm so confused. Well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. This is all, this is what I mean by creative coding. <laughs> we're, we're exploring. I'm just looking at the time. So the other thing I want to do, let's put this mapping back in. Um, and ah, uh, yeah, you can see this starting to look better, but oh, they're yeah, getting, yeah. they're getting bigger as they go that way. So um, I guess what I should do is let's start them all. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's have um, Z go backwards. Oh. And um, when they and the, when they get to, I'll go do it the other way. When they get to less than ten, I'll put them back to four hundred. There we go. Okay. So <laughs> I knew I had it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so right, because we want them to start far away, mm -hmm. and then they're going to slowly over time zoom past us. And I can, we could increase that speed quite a bit, and uh, we could also. Um, I'm just curious here, uh, this, yeah, um, let's, let's let them uh, go much further down. And, uh, ah, okay, the other thing is when I'm resetting them, I also want to give them a new, a new I wanna do this again. It's like when I reset them, they, shouldn't, they should have a new X and Y location just to be in a different spot. Mm, so you're not seeing kind of the same like sort yeah. of pattern every single time. Yeah. Okay. So let's add that in. And uh, oh, and factor, let's make factor a global variable yeah. so that we can use it. Okay. So, and let's make like a lot more of them. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and let's think about the size better. Um, okay, cool. This, and just like, cause this is, all new to me too. So I just want to make sure I can. Yeah, okay. Okay. So basically we have this array of vectors that we're calling, yeah. calling stars. The vectors are essentially just like a point in this canvas. And so they have that X, Y, and the Z. And then we're drawing a circle at each of those points. And then for every draw, time draw is called, which is basically like an infinite loop essentially, right? Yes. Yes. It then goes through and <laughs> increments that where that vector might be. So yes. that's giving us the moving. Yes. And then we're saying once it gets to a certain point in that if star dot Z is less than one, so if it's too 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 close to you, once it gets like up yeah. on you, right? Yes. Then restart that whole process and then put yes. them back and then come towards us. Okay. Okay. Yes. Cool. <laughs> yes. So so I'm I'm trying like this has a kind of a different look than what I originally created. So I will will sort of finesse that uh, and look back at sort of like a different example I made. But yeah, so one of the things that I'm confused by, maybe some in the chat, is they're all starting like so. And I don't, um, so let's let's have them all start um, at a at a high number. Okay. So as Z gets smaller, it spreads them out. But I wonder if this a factor, I'm just curious if I make this. Yeah, okay. So I think my factor was really off okay. in that I want it to feel much more like they're just very spread out at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now this already looks a lot better um, and we can see like a lot more of them. And you can see how when they're further away, they're small. Um, and, um, and as they come closer, they get bigger and bigger. Okay, this is great. So we're kind of in, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know where we are time-wise. We've got <laughs> about... 20, 25 ish minutes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So we got lots of time. So yeah. first um, I just want to, let's, let's, let's pause. You explained the code and I, I think you, you did a beautiful job of it. Let me now try to like walk through and see if we can unpack okay. and look at what might be some things we want to play with. Um, so this is the idea. So it's exactly what Olivia was saying is we're using the fact that P5 has this vector object baked into it because what I want to do is I want to pair for every star, I want three values. And actually when I did this, if you watch the video of me going through this, I used object-oriented programming. So I created a star class and that star class has different, which 
I is that probably a arguably a better way to do it. But for me here, I thought, okay, short period of time, let's just race through and make something. And it, it, you, th using the fact that create vector kind of does some of that wrapping for me of having an X, Y, Z um, is kind of convenient. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's what I'm doing. I want to basically spread out all of these stars into this huge X, Y, Z space. And then I have to figure out the, the core thing is like, I know that each one, I just want to draw as a circle. So a circle and it might, the code might be a little bit more clear if I put this right down here, um, right? The circle needs three things. It needs a color. So like, again, if I wanted to make them pink, I can give it an RGB color, right? Or purple. Um, it needs, uh, it could have an outline. So I'm not using out, outline, but if I wanted to say stroke, this is probably going to look very strange, but you can sort of see there's a blue outline on them now. But just to keep things simple, I'm saying no stroke for no outline. And then a circle needs an X location, a Y location, and a diameter. And so what's the sort of like what I'm realizing is probably hard for people to wrap their head around if you're watching this now is I'm kind of using some tricky math to create the illusion of three dimensions. And the way that I'm doing that is because I create an X, Y, and Z, I'm actually not changing the X and Y values at all. The X and Y values are totally static. I'm only changing the Z value. And what the Z value does is as it shrinks, it brings the, it's a divisor. So as it shrinks, the X and Y value that I'm drawing the circle at get bigger and bigger and create this illusion of moving out past you. And then if I also change the size, so as those circles move out to the right or left or up and down, they get a little bit bigger. It creates that illusion of something coming closer and only the ones in the center you see come more straight at you and then eventually fly past you. Okay, so that's okay. So that's why it's kind of right, like giving that like really quick yeah. illusion when it gets to you is because yeah. we're doing that divided by the star. Exactly. Dot. And okay. this, by the way, is known as projection. Is the term would this be projection? This is what three D renderers do. They create these, uh, you know, they use this sort of matrix of values and do all this math to create the illusion of three D. So this is kind of like you know, a very, very crude and rudimentary way of, of writing a 3D render. Now, of course, 3D renderers also make use of the graphics hardware and parallel processing to do all, you know, to do all sorts of additional stuff. But, but I think it's to me, like one of the things, one of the joys that I have is like realizing that like, oh, we can make stuff look 3D. Uh, that 3D isn't really 3D. It's just that illusion of perspective mm -hmm. of how things are sized and how they move according to that XYZ space. And, and one, a nice way of thinking about it is if you ever, um, if you, if you got yourself a flashlight and you got like a 3d object and you shined it, look at how that 3d object casts a shadow on a wall. That's basically what a 3d renderer is doing. Um, that makes um sense. okay. So, um, if people have, pre uh, and actually I have a whole set, a whole video that I could refer to, which is uh, doing a bit more with this of looking at how to build your own 3d render, but that's, that's a bit of a side. Okay. So, there's a few more things we could do with this. Um, two things I have in mind. One is I would love to show you how to make this interactive. Um, and so one quick thing that I can do in P5 is I'm going to make a variable called slider. And I'll call it a speed, I'll call it speed slider, just to be a bit more uh, specific. And um, I can say create slider. So uh, for any of you who do um, web development, you probably know that if you want to put a slider on a web page, it's a range element that you would write with HTML and style it with CSS. So P5 as a friendly kind of all-in-one JavaScript place has some functions that'll just automate adding other kinds of elements like create canvas made this canvas, create slider makes this slider. Now the slider, I need much like that map function, which takes a value that has some range and maps it to another range. It's up to me to define the range of the slider. So I wanted to talk to, to be the speed. So this slider should go anywhere from zero, maybe to, I'm currently using a speed of two. It's negative, but I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that um, um, just by uh, multiplying by negative one. So let's say the range goes from zero to 20, and I'm gonna give it a initial value of zero. And I want it to be able to move by little 0.1 increments. So that sets up the slider, I can move it now. And you can see what, again, if I refresh the page, its initial value is zero. If I wanted its initial value to be 10, 
like it's going to start in the center, but then I can adjust it. Now, if I want to get the slider's value, I can get it anywhere in the code. Let's again put it back to zero. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to change this value. Oh, I don't even have to turn it negative because I'm subtracting the value. Oh. So I can say speed slider dot value. So now when the program starts, when the sketch starts, the slider's at zero. So, but if I move it, this gets faster oh, cool. and it gets faster. And so this now I can use the slider to control the speed. That's really fun. I'm going to put it back to um, white because I, so one of, one of my, and let's give it an initial value of two, just so there is something. So one of my, one of the things that I try to do in my video tutorials is keep the visual d design of the examples that I make very bare bones. Um, you know, everybody's coming from different backgrounds and with different skills and experiences, but a lot of the work that I do is, um, set, is focused on teaching programming to um, designers and artists. So what I love to see, especially as I talked about the passenger showcase, is mm -hmm. if you are a person who really loves color theory or typography, like, you know, there's all sorts of things, like just to show you really quickly, like there's no reason why I can't just say text. Oops. I can call the P5 function text, put the letter A here and draw the letter uh, A oh, uh, at that location. <laughs> then I could also say, hey, look, text size V. So I could use that diameter value Oh, no, and I forgot a T there. Um, so it's hard for you to see. maybe Maybe I want to say, like, make that mapping, like, quite a bit more extreme. Oh, that's way too big. Look how <laughs> slow that just made it went. But you can see here, oh, it's actually, notice how that got very slow because mm -hmm. drawing those. So you can see, like, the idea of changing the design of something with P5 is as really simple as a different drawing function. You know, um, I'll leave this as a comment in here. Um, but, you know, there's no reason I couldn't have just changed these two squares. Um, so, um, there's all, and, um, if I go back to the reference, um, if I go to the reference here, a great place for you to start is under shape. So you can see here, like all of these, you know, arc, ellipse, circle, line, point, there's a basic, um, sort of, uh, you know, primitive geometry, but then all sorts of, I, you know, talked about Bezier curves and there's 3d things you can draw and you can create your own shapes and begin shapes. So, you know, we, again, <laughs> We don't have all day here. But there's so much <laughs> to learn and, and so many things you could draw. So I, I just wanted to point that out for those of you who are thinking about what might be your creative twist on this. Mm -hmm. I think there's one more thing I'd love to add to this. Okay. Which I'm not entirely sure the best way to do it, but um, what you don't see here, you kind of get this illusion of it when I make it go really fast. It feels like you see the streaks of hyperspace. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I know you're, everyone's watching this mediated through a stream. So I certainly, um, there might be, it might have like a less of a smooth uh, view if you're watching mm -hmm. this, you know, in the YouTube stream versus like actually writing the code in the browser. So it's one thing to note that you might want to go and like run it yourself later to see what it looks like. But what I would love to do is I would love for each star to not only know where it currently is, but to save where it previously was so that I could connect that with a line. So okay. that the faster it goes, okay. that line would go longer. So okay, so it's like it always has like a trailing. It's like a comment, yeah. kind of. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna this. I'm, I'm for all of you JavaScript programmers out there. I'm curious to hear: is, Am I doing something bad? Am I am I being sort of like naughty in terms of my like <laughs> ways that I'm manipulating code to my own desires? But I think a nice way: any object, like the P5 vector object, has built into it an X, Y, and a Z. But there's no reason why. I couldn't give it another variable. Like I'm just going to add a property to it. I'll call it PZ for previous Z. And let's set that equal to its current Z. So what I've done here is I've created the P5 vector with three values. And I think it might make sense for this, by the way, to be a... Um, uh, just because I, if I resize the window, uh, I think it'll be nice to have Z sort of like always map to that. And let me put that in here. So it's it good. Generally, you know, I try to avoid having hard coded values in the code, like whatever the canvas is, is how I'm kind of going to scale everything. Mm -hmm. But the, the, again, the thing I'm focusing on now is I need a variable to keep track of both the current Z location, which is part of P5 vector. And now I'm going to add a new property PZ for previous Z. So what do I want to do? Where do I, ah, so right here is where Z changes. So what I should do is right before I change Z, let's make sure I save the previous value. Okay. So I'm about to adjust Z. 
So let me save the previous one. And up here, in, then in addition to drawing a line, I'm going to need the previous X, which is the star's previous, oh, well, no, the star's current X divided by the star's previous Z. There we go. So I need to figure out what is that X and Y position based on its X and Y, but the previous Z. So that's the, that's kind of where I just drew it previously. And what I should be able to do now is say stroke 255. Like I want to have, I need that outline to draw a line. And then I can draw a line <laughs> from X, Y to P, X, P, Y. And I've done something wrong, which I'm sure the chat will help. That's kind of a cool effect though. It is. <laughs> wow. What did I do? Okay. Uh, yeah, let's look okay. at this. Okay. So let's look at this. TZ equals star dot Z, then change it, divide. I don't know. Um, this, this feels good to me. I, the, the chat's going to help me with this. I know. This is, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, but I think I did that correctly. Okay. Maybe there's something. Uh, oh, am I making new stars? No. Uh, no, this should be. Oh, you know what it is. I know what it is. Uh, this is a problem. So the it's actually working, but it's drawing all these extra lines. I kind of like it. Okay, I figured out what's going on. Uh, <laughs> so when it because I'm resetting it back, okay. and I and the P location, the previous location is very very far away, so mm -hmm. it draws a long line. So when it gets reset, I should also set its previous location back to 400. So because because what I wanted to add is a very subtle change. And right. you won't really see it until, but when it goes oh, faster, whoa. you can see those streaks happening now. Okay. So because that line is not very long. Um, you know, I could, if I wanted the line to be much longer, I could store like many previous ones or I could, you know, there, there's lots of other ways I could approach this. Um, okay. But but I think this is a nice way of doing it. Yeah, um, and looking, just, just yeah. to address a couple things in the chat yeah. real quick. Cole, I know you said that in the live stream, the code's a little fuzzy. Ah, um, okay. In the replay, it should be okay. Um, but also, uh, uh, Dan has all this kind of, you can yeah. play around with all these challenges after this too. So sorry, yeah. it's a little fuzzy for that. Um, well, I made the code a little bit bigger now just to kind of help that. might with help that. a little, yeah. Um, and one thing that, I, that I'll show actually, I'm going to take this, um, I think I can take this URL right here and close it and the server is still running so I can still access the local server here. So one of the things I wanted to show you that I think also would could be nice, we'll see what happens is I can, um, uh, well, what I would need to do is add some CSS to not have any uh, padding, but I can basically create a, um, I can auto detect the browser uh, size. And if I do this, if we go back here, we can now see like I've got this much more like full screen. We you know the slider's kind of down here. Yeah. So this, I don't know what the, I'm sure this is like killing. Oh, you know what's happening is this is killing YouTube compression. I always forget this. Yeah. So now like that's one reason to go back and forth. Like now I'm sure the code is very crystal clear mm -hmm. because of having the little window going in here, it was trying to do the like video compression for that. Yeah. I think, I think it's anyway. for some people it's fine for others. It's not because yeah. I know, um, uh, yeah. Catala actually, they they figured out that PZ issue when you had the line. So yes, yes. <laughs> I think some it's people going... are able to, but yeah, yeah, definitely check back on the, yeah. the replay and everything you should be able yeah. to do. And just, um, so, you know, I can, what I'll do right now, just um, just while we're here, um, is I'm gonna make a uh, GitHub gist, which um, is a really quick way I can say, uh, gist from uh, VS code stream, and I'll call this sketch.js. And I'll just paste it in here and I'll make this a public gist. I don't know how to say it. it's GIF. I know, but I don't know. It's gist. I say GIF, but I say gist. Um, I say gist too. Yeah. I actually so, don't know. I've never really thought about if that's right or not. So this, I, this, I know this is kind of like an insane URL for anybody to find, but if you just go to gist.github.com slash shiftman, it should be this first one now. So you can find that, that this code that I wrote just now right here. But um, as Olivia was saying, if I go back to the Starfield page, which has the original one, if I, you know, there's the processing code. If I click on P5, you'll actually see a version of this um, running in the browser. And this is using the P5 um, web editor. And you'll see it looks quite similar. The main difference here is I'm not, instead of creating a new vector, I'm creating a star object. Mm -hmm. And so I made this example with, um, with using, uh, actually this is using o an old style of a JavaScript constructor function, but it's essentially a um, object-oriented programming way of creating the same exact um, simulation. 
Caution. Whoa, yeah. well, it's so that <laughs> it's a little bit jarring when it's that fast and that big. I have to like, I think I have to like, just for my own sanity, let's uh, go back and make it like uh, 640 by like 360. There we go. This is a nice, uh, I think this is a nice happy medium. I think so. This is so life. mesmerizing. I can, every time we have the, I've just been like, like I have been paying attention to you, Dan, but also I've just been like lost in this like visual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very zen. <laughs> So I mean that's I I, I feel I, I could I could keep making adding new things to this forever, but I think this is a good place for me to wrap up. But I'm definitely happy to take any questions or to like dig back into the P5 website or the Coding Train website if if there are any things that I've kind of like glossed over really fast that would be helpful to the audience. Yeah, absolutely. We're on like the last you know final five minutes, so this was like perfect timing. Um, so yeah, y'all put in your um, questions in the chat. Um, I think back at the very start, there was one person who just wanted a little bit more explanation of the vector object. If you can yes. maybe just go into that a little bit. Oh, oh, so great news for you. I forgot, like I don't mean to be like plugging all of my things here, <laughs> but one, the, a project that I'm actively working on right now is called The Nature of Code. And it's a textbook that I wrote, um, well, a bunch of years ago. Let's see. So there, the, the um, I'm looking for, there's a few different places. So the GitHub repo for it is github.com slash nature of code. And you can find um, this particular repo, which is the nature of code book 2023. And there's a version of the book that you can um, uh, uh, buy right now and read. It's all online here and it has a whole chapter on vectors, but <laughs> What I want to show is actually I'm working on a new updated version of the book and there's a preview site of it. You can see that it's just sort of deployed to a Netlify um, uh, um, URL that's sort of, um, and I have a whole chapter on this thing called a vector. <laughs> so basically if, you know, I'm going to give you the like 30 second version of this, but if you really want to dig deeper into this sort of concept of a vector and how it plays a role in programming phys different kinds of physics simulations and other kinds of generative algorithms and artworks and math things. Um, this chapter is um, kind of all about that. So one of the things you'll see is like, these are uh, P5 sketches where I've got the P5 code embedded on the page and you can open, you can get the code from the web editor and you can run this code in VS code, et cetera. I've got a whole repo of all the examples, but I'm trying to think of what, basically the idea of a vector, and I'll use this diagram here is, um, you know, a vector is a very broad term. You'll hear it a lot in even like machine learning of this idea of like, it's like a list, it's a, a bunch of numbers collected together. But one of the nice ways to start thinking about a vector is a vector in a 2D plane, which can be visualized as a vec as a um, as an arrow. So essentially this idea, if you can think of it, I'm using it to draw a star as basically saying like, this is where I want to draw that star relative to the origin point of the window. And then I might also use a vector that tells the star where to move for the next frame of animation. So, um, and so if I were writing, and I realize this might be a little bit small as well. If I were writing my own vector class, I would write an object that has an X and Y value in it. And in P5, essentially, it does that for you. So I'm, okay. I'm, I have too many tabs open here. But if I go to uh, create vector, um, and look at the reference page for create vector, you'll see it's essentially a way of collecting two values or three values together. So I could have done this a lot of times in code. If you're drawing an animation or you're drawing a shape, you, you, you have a variable called X and you have a variable called Y. And maybe if you're in 3D, you have a variable called Z. But why not <laughs> just if, if you're doing that a lot over and over again, it's helpful to have a variable that collects the properties together. And that's what a JavaScript object is. So it's essentially like if I go, I'm, um, if I open up a new, uh, just like, I'll just call this like test.js. Like if I, I could have this, I could have three variables or I could say, hey, a vector is a a JavaScript object with three values in it and excuse all of my, um, if, you know, any syntax errors that might be coming up here. So this is, these are, are kind of equivalent, but P5 has vectors built into it. So I can say instead, uh, I can say this. So this is kind of the progression. And I know like um, the idea of like, oh, 
often in programming, I need an X, Y, Z variable. Oh, if I'm doing that a lot, let's make an object literal that collects the X, Y, Z. Oh, if I'm really doing that a lot, why don't we have a library collect those variables and manage them? And there's all sorts of functions. You can rotate a vector, you can scale a vector. And that's again, beyond the scope of what we're able to do today, but certainly the nature of code book, um, uh, which is, um, goes through all of that in great detail and the sort of goal just to like skip ahead for a second is like I'll just look at like um, you know by working with vectors you'll kind of get to I'm like looking for the last example here in this chapter um, you know you start to be able to build simulations like this okay. where um, you know each one of these circles has a vector that's keeping track of its position its velocity there's different forces and rules at play that are vectors so as your kind of simulations get more sophisticated separate variables and doing the same math over and over again becomes somewhat unsustainable flocking is what i'm looking for yes this is my favorite um example i'm <laughs> That's why, uh, there we go. There's the flocking example. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, I mean, if any of y'all are like me, I sometimes like really struggle with like, I understand the concept, but then like actually like visualizing, okay, what does that point look like? I think just, you know, Dan has so many amazing resources for you to just get started with this, check out the documentation, check out some of his challenges and just play around with it. Cause like the more you play around with it, you'll kind of start to see, okay, right. like if I move it here, that's going to give this vibe and you'll, you'll kind of start to be able to, you know, match your ideas of what something should look like with what that actually looks like in the code and as a vector and represented by points. Um, so yeah, big plug for that. Um, and everyone who's been watching and you've been hearing, you know, Dan talk about his nature of code book um, and just the documentation for P5JS, um, all of that will be available in the replay um, video description. Um, so if you're like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna find this? Don't worry, we have all the links for you that will be in that YouTube video description. So you can make sure to learn even more after this. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, I know we're about at time. Um, there's literally so many amazing um, comments from people just saying, <laughs> I can't even pick a, 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 like, there's so many, not a question, but I love this man. Coding train is amazing. <laughs> um, people are so excited to have you here. I'm so glad we could have you here. Um, is there any, you know, kind of final things you want to touch on before we move to just a quick lightning round to get to know you a little better? <laughs> no, just thank you so much for having me. I, I, you know, I'm, I love to try and learn and experiment with all different kinds of code editors and platforms. And I, you know, I hope that, um, you know, I know that people who watch the coding train are very familiar with P5, but, and a lot of the stuff that I do, but there's such a big world of people who are using VS code and all sorts of other tools. So I would love, I'm, I'm just so glad to connect with everybody and thank you for this opportunity to be here to share, share with the audience. Absolutely. Thank you. Seriously. This is amazing. <laughs> Okay, so before we close out, we're going to do a very quick lightning okay. round. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's a couple of very quick questions. So you don't have to practice these. Um, first up, we kind of already talked about this a little bit, but GIF or GIF? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm I'm GIF all the way. I'm GIF all the way, too. Yeah. Like, you can't you can't convince me otherwise. People but it's okay. I, like, yeah, I that's don't fine. People, everybody, I don't mean to yuck anybody's yum. Everybody <laughs> yeah, should exactly. feel free to say whatever they want. But to me, it's, uh, to me, I just... What comes out of my mouth when I see the word is GIF. It has, yeah. And like, I can't reprogram myself to yeah. like think of it any other way. I had to, when I'm like writing these questions down, I have to like physically write like GIF or JIF. Otherwise my mind's yeah. just going to be like GIF or GIF. <laughs> like, and be like not know how to say it. Um, okay. Similar question. JSON or Jason? Oh, oh my goodness. So this one, I don't know. I, I, I wish you had it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Jason, I think Jason. I think Jason too. Yeah, but yeah. but I do the same thing, and then I'm like, okay, is it Jason? Yeah, but I do yeah. Jason. Well, we're I very, probably we're very... say them both uh, randomly. Yeah. <laughs> or some other weird pronunciation that I don't even know what it is right now. But yeah. depends on the day. Yeah, yeah. depends <laughs> on the day. But Jason, yeah, Jason. Okay. So non-programming related, what is your biggest pet peeve? Oh my biggest pet peeve. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Oh, there's so I've probably way too many pet peeves. Uh, but I'm, like my mind goes to programming ones. Like I can't That's tolerate funny. stuff being uh, uh, indentation out of place. Oh, okay, yeah. You need to have but, it all format. That's yes, oh, so probably yes. like not having your formatter today was like driving you crazy. Yeah, it was, it was no definitely making me this. very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> That's totally fair. <laughs> okay. And last one. Um, I know you mentioned that, you know, VS Code is, you know, there's a lot that you still want to tap into for it, but do you have a favorite extension that you cannot live without in VS Code? 
Oh yeah. Well, I was gonna say like um, the auto auto, auto formatting. So I think I use. I've like tried so many different ways. I think I'm using Prettier these days. Oh yeah, Prettier is a classic. That's the um, one I use too. Yeah. <laughs> and so that to me, but I also like once I uh, I like this one where um, it colors your curly brackets differently to show you which ones close with others. Yeah. And I also like that because it just makes everything kind of rainbow themed. <laughs> Oh, I love all the like different rainbow yeah. ones. There's, um, yeah. you should check out if you are really into like indentation. There's, um, I think it's just called rainbow indent, Ooh. but if you, it literally like colorizes all of your indents so you can see it. So it's sometimes yeah. distracting, but if you just want like a day where your code looks really, really pretty, get yeah. that and it looks so yeah. cool because it will just yeah. have that whole rainbow. <laughs> no, that sounds perfect for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Dan, for coming on. Seriously, we appreciate so much um, bringing your energy. Um, everyone, definitely make sure to check out all the links that we'll have in the YouTube description page so you can connect with Dan um, and check out all the documentation, check out his book, um, and then try out some of the coding challenges. Awesome. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was so fun. Absolutely. I'm sure we'll, we'll try to definitely have you on again because, I mean, everyone was so excited to have you here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for watching. Um, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can see this um, recorded um, and replay this and get all that goodness all over again. Um, and then also check out our TikTok channels as well if you want to see some more of those shorts. Everyone, have a great day. Thank you, Dan, for being here. And thank you all thank for you. watching.